it's been a great spring so far interacting with all of you uh, folks out there in Blogland. Um, lots of good questions and answers going back and forth. I'm going to try to do this video question and answer session on a routine basis throughout the regular season. So let's test it out and see how it goes. I'm looking over some of your questions uh, on the blog the last couple of days. We got one from Lola here who wants to know about the thin air that we've been talking about in Arizona and how that might impact Eric Bedar as a pitcher. A lot of you have actually written in here to ask me um, why Bedar is more impacted uh, while he's pitching down in the drier air of Arizona than let's say another pitcher. Uh, why was Randy Johnson so successful throwing here with the Arizona Diamondbacks when he had to throw in the thin air? The thing with the thinner air is it makes it very difficult to grip the ball. It makes the ball extremely slick and pitchers who rely more on movement of their pitches like a curveball specialist like Bedar are going to tend to have more problems with that, with their release point with other things than let's say a power pitcher like a Randy Johnson or even like a Felix Hernandez who had a pretty good series of outings this spring and a lot of that has to do with the fact that Hernandez throws 96 mile an hour fastballs. So those are his bread and butter pitches. Guys like Bedar tend to rely on the curveball, they rely on the movement of pitches and when you rely on that you have to get a proper grip on the ball. If you can't do it, the ball's not going to do the things you want it to do. Bedar has not thrown a lot of curveballs down here in Arizona. That could be one reason why he's given up nine home runs in only 20 innings of work. If he starts doing that during the regular season, it's time to hit the panic button. Right now, I'm not going to panic until I see how he throws under normal atmospheric conditions. Uh, that was one question. We got another question about Badar here from NB, who uh, actually it's from DR. It's from DR who asks, um, does Badar have any friends in the clubhouse? Yes, Badar does have friends in the clubhouse. Badar is not a clubhouse cancer. He's not a Barry Bonds. He's not uh, a jerk, as some of you have asked me if he is. The fact that he doesn't talk a lot to the media, that's Bedard's business. Uh, Bedard, as I've written before, as long as he's polite with the media, that's all he has to do. He doesn't have to give long-winded answers uh, in order to do his job with his ball club. I think as far as his uh, teammates go, they tend to like him. The ones I've talked to says that he ha say that he has a great sense of humor, uh, a really wry sense of humor, sort of subtle, like most of us Canadians like to have it. Um, and, and he's kind of funny that way. It's not the kind of wit that he shows in his interviews with the media, obviously but it is seen by the people who know him and I've talked to people who know Bedar outside of baseball and they say the exact same thing they say he's actually a very clever a very funny guy so if you're worried about him being a cancer in the clubhouse or any kind of distraction I would say that based on what I've seen in spring training and the people I've talked to no that's not even close to happening I think we should sit back watch Bedar pitch see how he does and we'll hit the panic button uh, like I said if, if the home runs start flying out on him at Safeco Field um, right now, I'm not too worried about that. Somebody else wrote in, a lot of you have actually written in asking me about R.A. Dickey and uh, what his chances are of making the team. There was a report out there today on one of the internet sites saying that the Mariners had offered R.A. Dickey back to the Minnesota Twins, which they would have to do if they, if they uh, don't keep him on the 25-man roster because he's a Rule 5 draft pick. I frankly have not been able to confirm that today. Uh, that would not make a whole lot of sense to me based on what the Mariners have been saying out loud. I mean, John McLaren's been singing Dickey's praises all year. He's been comparing him to Tim Wakefield. I don't know about you, but if I have Tim Wakefield on my ball club, I'm not getting rid of him so I can keep Chasson Beck or another wrong, long reliever. If you really think that you have Tim Wakefield and you're not just uh, speaking to hear your own voice or fill up airtime, then I, I think there's got to be a spot on this club for R.I. Dickey, especially given the state of the bullpen, especially considering that Brandon Morrow uh, might not be ready to go to start the regular season. If you really believe that, and you have a guy who can offer you long relief in multiple innings, several uh, consecutive games in a row, I think you have to take that chance. You have to at least see what Dickey can do. Even if you risk losing Chasson Beck uh, through the waiver wire, I think you have to see what Dickey can do. And I think the potential of having that rubber arm there far outweighs anything else we've seen. That's the way I see it anyway. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. We've seen lots of strange things happen with this ball club.